Thank you very much, Peter. Um, the next person that I'm going to introduce in our second panelist is a man named Nick Inskip. And he works for an organization called HERA, which is the Heavy Engineering Research Association, which is an organization that's dedicated to our metal industries here in New Zealand. He's extremely passionate about manufacturing, and so I'm looking forward, as I'm sure you are, to what he says today. Thank you. The uh, HERA, as I uh, just mentioned, is the Heavy Engineering Research Association. We actually have 600 member companies, and we're really at the sharp end of dealing with uh, uh, industry issues, especially in the high-value manufacturing sector. So through the global financial crisis, we've got a unique perspective on what's really happening out there, and it's uh, been pretty bad. The, um, what we've got... Um, um, in our industry is a situation where between 2008 and 2010, the amount of steel that was processed through our industry dropped by 38%. I think if you were a bank or an insurance company or a, um, somewhere like the warehouse, you'd be out of business in that situation. But the companies involved in our sector have jobs that are generally skilled and semi-skilled jobs. And by and large, many of them tried to hang on to their, their people and uh, it's very, very hard to do when you drop that far that quickly. People have talked about a, uh, um, uh, things getting better, and they are getting better. You know, today we're only 26% down on where we were in 2008, but that's a very, very slow claw backwards. And the big problem has been that margins are really constrained. There is no money out there in these companies. So when we talk about doing research and development, about entering new markets, developing new products on the back of the high value area, it, there's no money there in industry to do that, which is a real tragedy. However, the jobs that are there uh, are generally high value jobs, but over time has become increasingly a thing of the past, and many of the semi-skilled jobs have gone. And it's, the people are hanging on, even with very constrained margins. The companies I talk to tell me they don't really expect things to get better in the short term. They're saying maybe in five or 10 years' time, we may still start to build some margin again. But when the hope for New Zealand is in selling high-value products offshore, it really means that we have to find another way of funding some of that if there's no money in the companies uh, beyond what they're using today just to keep themselves going. The, um, in looking at export markets, which is where ma many of our companies are looking at, and at import replacement, uh, we think there's really three things that we should be um, recognizing and, uh, and looking at. One is that um, we need to s stop thinking of all companies as being equal and recognize that companies involved in high-value manufacturing and those wanting to export and do import replacement need to be treated differently. If you've got a target support, that's really where it's got to go to. And you know, they will develop the products if there is help there, but they haven't got the money themselves to do it right now. The second thing is that we need to recognize that the large companies here, and many of the large companies in New Zealand are state-owned enterprises, they have a role in being good corporate citizens. And that means that they really need to work with industry to develop solutions that they may need themselves to, for the problems they have in their companies. And by working with local industry, it means that those companies that uh, they work with will have products to take to market. That is called lead user innovation. And countries like the UK um, use that as one of the cornerstones of their procurement policies, you know, that they will encourage lead user innovation. And if we do that, of course, then these companies are being good corporate citizens. And if we don't do it, then what are they? Are they really Kiwi companies, even if they are state-owned? What are they doing that's really helping this country move forward? If all they're looking for when they have a problem is to go offshore and try and find a solution somewhere else to help somebody else's balance of uh, trade and payments. And the third thing that we really need to recognize is the government in many, many forms, including local government, are major procurers in this country. They buy things. They build bridges, they build roads, you know, they, they build uh, new airports, they do all sorts of stuff, and they spend a lot of money. 
But one of the things, merging trends that I'm seeing out there is a lowest price at any cost culture developing. And when I say that, it means when you go lowest price, there is a cost. And the cost is, of course, to high value jobs in this country. And there's a cost to our balance of payments and to our society when we don't look at what we can do locally and trying to work with local companies. So whether it's building um, bus shelters or, uh, or, or um, new ferries, they really people need to look at what we're doing locally and recognize that it's a whole of life costing we need to be looking at. And I've seen too many imported products bought in where the coatings fail or the weldings aren't up to standard or in some cases uh, key components aren't working right. And you can't tell me that's good for our country when we have to go and keep repairing these things. In terms of quality, they would tell you that that's a quality cost. And that means that the cheapest is not always best. So in conclusion, what I would say is what we need is a compact. A compact between government, state-owned enterprises, industry, unions, uh, marketers, research and development. Everybody in this country needs to get together to drive the high-value manufacturing industry because that's where the high-value jobs are going to come in the future. Not just for the people today who need them, they're out there not working, but also for our children. And I would not like to think that in 20 years' time there'll be another meeting like this which our kids will be having because we haven't done the right thing. Now, it's our job to fix this, but we all need to work together. And I say that's what we need to do. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. Um, our next 